Anderson. And as chair of the Charlottesville Center for Peace and Justice, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you to tonight's event. You will be later introduced to Cindy Sheehan, a gold star mother who has been actively opposing the war in Iraq, and Anne Wright, a diplomat in the State Department who resigned on the day this disastrous war began. We hope that you will be informed by their message, encouraged by their example, and inspired by the powerful music of the extraordinarily talented Terry Allard. The Charlottesville Center for Peace and Justice sponsors lectures and presentations such as the one you're about to hear as part of its comprehensive program of peace education and peace advocacy. For the past 24 years, our center has been a voice and a force for peace in the community of Charlottesville. In Teaching Peace, we have sponsored programs and lectures featuring speakers of local, national, and international renown. In the month of March alone, we've had a number of speakers, and many of you have attended some of these events. I'd like to give you some examples of those speakers. We had Aman Ahmed Kamas, a Baghdad journalist who advocates for the rights of Iraqi women and who has documented crimes committed by the U.S. and Iraq. Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Karen Kwiatkowski, an individual who retired from the office of the Secretary of Defense and who has been an outspoken critic of the Pentagon's pre-war propaganda development. We've had Tia Steele, another mother of a US soldier killed in Iraq and a member of Gold Star Family Speak Out. We've sponsored Gail Ray McGovern, a veteran army officer and retired CIA analyst and co-founder of Veterans Intelligence. We've had David Swanson, Washington Director of Democrats.com and of ImpeachPAC.org and co-founder of AfterDowningStreet.org. At the end of the month of March, we had a woman come and speak, sponsored by ourselves and by UVA group Critical Mass and the local Amnesty International group. This was Amy Goodman, the host of the nationally syndicated radio and television news program, Democracy Now! <laughs> that was a wonderful event, very well attended, and those of you who came know that it was really good. This is an example of some of the kinds of things that our center does. We provide information through our literature and outreach tables at various events. And these, these, this literature, these tables, help to inform the public about current issues. And we invite you to stop by whenever you see one of these information tables or exhibits at uh, some event in Charlottesville. And we have one a table out there in the lobby now. And we invite you to stop by, take a look when you go out into the lobby, and to consider becoming a member of our tabling staff. CCPJ also provides draft information and counseling to young people in the schools. We do nonviolence peace education programs, which teach specific skills, conflict resolution, mediation, and ways of bringing about peaceful ends through peaceful means. We sponsor discussion groups. One of the most successful of our discussion groups is our monthly salon. These salons provide open dialogue and living room conversations with in-depth discussion and issue about issues that are important to community members. And it allows them to discuss these issues with each other in an intimate and informal atmosphere. Topics that have been covered in our salons over the past year have included some very interesting subjects. For example, power of the purse, boycotts and divestment. Another month we had shock and awe, democracy under siege. Still another program was entitled Kyoto in Charlottesville. If Seattle can do it, why can't we? 
or leave my child alone dealing with military recruitment in the schools. One very popular program was entitled Leaders, Lies, and Laws, Discovering Our Creative Anger. Music of protest and peace from folk to hip hop. And uh, still later in March, we had war in Iraq, and now war in Iran, is this possible? Even if you can't get to one of these salons, there are other ways in which we encourage people to inform themselves and discuss the issues. We have a number of books that we circulate among ourselves, and we have developed a library of videos and DVDs which are, we are happy to let you borrow. Uh, the titles and the offerings uh, from our library will be posted soon uh, on our website. We provide opportunities for citizens to exercise their civic responsibilities. We offer voter empowerment cards at our information table, providing clear information on registration, absentee ballots, and the voting process. We distribute petitions, which we encourage people to sign. We have letter writing campaigns, phone calls, emails, visits, visits from our group to local, state, national, and international leaders. Every Thursday, you will see one of our demonstrations. It takes place in front of the Federal Courthouse building on the corner of McIntyre and Main Street. This gives us a chance to make a public witness and to testify to our beliefs about peace and justice. And we're there every Thursday from 5 to 6 during the daylight hours, uh, daylight saving times hours. Anyone who's interested is welcome to join us and to join our intrepid demonstrators. We have had marches and rallies on other occasions too. For example, we uh, recently demonstrated in front of the Rotunda, uh, commemorating the third anniversary of the war last March. We've demonstrated at the train station when a number of CCPJ people came out with banners, cards, flags, donuts, and cheers, and coffee to cheer on the people who were coming through Charlottesville on the train on their way to demonstrate in Washington. We called it the peace train. We've had people come down to the new freedom of expression wall on the downtown mall to voice our opinions and concerns about the war. Being a civic-minded citizen, a civic-minded advocate for peace and justice can be fun. You can ask any of our peace protesters or those who participated in the CCPJ contingent that marched on the Dogwood Festival or the ones that will march in a, in a few days at the Batesville Parade. We also invite you to support peace by patronizing the arts. Last December, our Arts for Peace celebration was a great success. It featured arts, crafts, food, and music by wonderful musicians. And we hope that you will plan to come to the next Arts for Peace event, which will take place on November 4th at the Greek Orthodox Church. Donations for the silent auction of this event can be made now. And you can find out more about more information about this if you go out to our literature table in the lobby. Our programs have embraced a variety of issues, as you can see, that in the final analysis proclaim that peace and justice are inextricably intertwined. They are absolutely necessary for the survival and well-being of our world. We encourage you to support these efforts. We encourage your financial contributions to CCPJ. These are all tax deductible. We're definitely nonprofit, and we have no overhead because we have no paid staff. The suggested donations that we request make these programs possible, but they defray only a part of the cost. And so when you make those contributions, you're really helping us to proclaim peace and justice. We invite you to attend these events that I've described tonight to come to our monthly CCPJ meetings in which we plan programs and strategize our actions, and to join one of several dynamic committees, such as the one that organized tonight's event. Come to our annual meeting, which will be held on June 8th, 
in the basement of Wesley Memorial Methodist Church. There we will gather at 5.30 and then enjoy a potluck supper, elect officers for the coming year, and hear inspiring stories from the representatives of a number of peace and justice groups with which we network and work in coalitions. Visit our website. This is a place where you can learn what is going on in Charlottesville in the peace and justice community and where you can submit your events for advertising, posting, and inclusion in our email alerts. Call our information number, 961-6278, or get on our email list. This email list provides information to more than a thousand people our email alerts go out weekly and provide stimulating and inspiring information and concerns being addressed by the CCPJ. The Charlottesville Center for Peace and Justice provides a way for those in our community who care about peace and justice to join with kindred spirits who are guided by our vision of a world of peace and justice. People often ask, where is the CCPJ located? Although we once had an office at the corner of Gordon Avenue and Rugby Road, we no longer have this office. This cuts down on overhead and has allowed us to do more with the contributions we collect. The CCPJ is not so much a place as it is a concept. One of our leaders in CCPJ, Sarah Landsman, has said, the CCPJ is nowhere and it is everywhere. It is here, in the heart, we are not a place, but an attitude, a state of mind, a force, if you will. We are individuals who are your neighbors. We encourage all citizens to hold our leaders accountable and to take responsibility for the policies and decisions of our local, state, and national governments. We encourage you to join us, for we believe that the Center for Peace and Justice emanates from every individual heart that seeks to do justice and love mercy. Once more, we thank you for coming tonight, and we hope that you will be inspired by tonight's program, and that the examples of these speakers will empower you to do your part in working for peace and justice in a world that sorely needs it. Thank you.